Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, and in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the basics of how to use Reaper, but specifically for if you want to do a voiceover or a podcast, just to take that a little further, because for me, production-wise, a podcast is basically a voiceover, but maybe with two channels or three channels and a little bit extra. So I'm going to look at walking you through that specifically and hopefully I won't leave anything out, but if I do not answer anything that you have questions on in this particular video, maybe you could check out the Ultimate Reaper guide that we've done with Pro Mix Academy. That is available, that is a 13 hour course that goes in all the detail you could possibly, possibly need uh, of how to get up and running uh, all the technical stuff, if your interface isn't working perhaps, any effects you might want to use, all the extra stuff that can really polish off your production. Today's video is a basics video, so without further ado, let's go. Before that quickly, uh, this video is brought to you by us with our ultimate reaper guide through Pro Mix Academy. If you want to know the absolute ins and outs of everything to do with production, effects, how to get things set up right, if something like your monitoring isn't working, why that might be, uh, some of the ways that the different production styles can be achieved inside Reaper is all there and it's available for you in the description below. Let's go. Okay, I'm at my computer and I have opened Reaper. It's pretty much set as default. There are a couple of customization options that I like to do and I'll talk about them briefly, but I'm doing another video right now about exactly how I like to customize Reaper. So you might wanna watch that as well if that's relevant to the little things that you see that are not standard. Now, uh, as it stands, I'm talking into a microphone up here, uh, which isn't the microphone you're seeing blinking around on the screen. So let's start afresh, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Shure SM7B as my voiceover microphone. Uh, now, you choose whatever mic you like. I'm guessing you already have one if you're watching this video. Uh, this video is not about that. This video is just about working efficiently in Reaper and getting in what you want to get in. So, first things first, make sure you're wearing headphones because if you have your sound coming out of speakers, you're probably gonna end up with some sort of howling feedback. Nobody wants that. And if you're the kind of voiceover artist who doesn't wanna wear headphones all the time, that's fine, but do have some handy to make sure everything's working properly and coming in as you expect at the beginning. You can use speakers to edit with, of course, but just make sure you've got something so you can speak and listen, test it all yourself. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've opened this up. I'm running in 44.1 kilohertz mode here. So if I top right this bar, if I click on that, I get the settings. Now in Windows, generally you want to use the ACO settings. On Mac, you'll just use their normal core audio. And you pick the driver that is relevant to the interface, the box that you have. In my case, it's Hammerfall, which is the RME one. There's an Audient one here too, but I'm not using that today, despite wearing the Audient uh, top. Uh, I am using an Audient preamp, but again, getting too technical, let's talk about that another day. So once that's selected, make sure your first and last inputs actually cover the entire range of inputs so that whatever channel you've plugged this into, is available to Reaper because you can choose for some reason, I don't know why, not to have all the channels available to Reaper. Uh, if you're working with film, generally they will want you to work at 48 kilohertz. So you will tick request sample rate and change that to 48,000. As it is, I'm gonna stick with this today just cause I've already set this up and that will make things go horribly screwy. But yeah, generally film guys, film editors, producers, uh, anything to do with film, everything to do with the sound there is done at 48k so that's what they'll want that's where you'll change it and then hit okay all being well you'll get numbers up here yours should say 48 kilohertz 
24-bit wave and some numbers up there. Now, the numbers are less relevant if you're doing something like voiceover because there are two ways to now do this. Both ways include us right-clicking in this little box and clicking insert new track. Alternatively, just double-click in this space on the left. Uh, I'm going to drag the bottom of this track to make it bigger so we can see exactly what's going on. And the first thing I'm going to do is hit this record button here. That's not record as in go. That's arming it for record, like you would arm a weapon type thing, getting it ready. And the very next thing I'm going to do, if you haven't done this already, is go to File and Save Project As. So in my studio folder, I'm going to tick the boxes here that say Create Directory for Project Subdirectory and this copy all media into project, which if you've accidentally started recording already before hitting save for the first time, this will save your bacon by putting all the files you've recorded into this nice new folder. I'm gonna call this uh, Reaper VoiceOver and hit save. You need to name yours appropriately to you. So the next thing I'm gonna do is this little blank box next to where we just hit the record arm on our track. I'm going to double click and give this a name. I'm going to call this voiceover one. Who knows, I might have a second actor on a new track. But in terms of tracks, actually, try not to use more than one track. Keep this simple for yourself. There are other better ways for people who do voiceover to keep your project organized here. And we'll talk about that in a second. The next thing now we record armed is we'll be able to click a little drop down here to choose which input we're using. So this SM7B microphone that I'm using is plugged in on my interface. It's plugged into channel 17. If you've got a small interface and it's only got two inputs, the microphone's either going to go into channel one or channel two. Um, if your microphone is the kind of mic that needs 48 volt phantom power, make sure that button is turned on on your interface. If it doesn't need it, don't press that button. And if you're not sure whether it needs that or not, check the manuals, ask somebody. That's not Reaper specific. That is to do with making sure the microphone has power. The SM7 is the kind of microphone that doesn't need that at all. Although there is a, a kind of a gain control on my interface to make the mic louder. And with the SM7 particularly, we're turning that up quite a lot so that we can see lights, we can see things move. And now I'm going to go to input mono because we only have one microphone. This, Even though it's going to come out of two speakers, this is mono. And I need to choose Radat ADAT 17. In your case, you, if, like I say, if you've got two inputs, one and two, plug your microphone into number one, and you should be able to choose number one. And you can see that there is a, a level going here. Now, at this point, what I like to do is set my levels. I, for voiceover, highly recommend that you have a rough average where this little bar says minus 18 and where the peaks maybe go up to minus 12 so that if you have to shout or really enunciate or any big movement then there's plenty of space for you to get louder but it won't hit the top because if it hits the top it will distort it's not like analog it will distort and it will sound disgusting if you're sending this off to an editor they'll send it back and say, please, can you re-record this bit? So rather than doing that, make sure it's a little lower down. When we record, this will look rather quiet. And actually it might sound rather quiet on the headphones. So do turn your headphones up to match, not the gain on the interface. That way you can send this off to your editor or you can edit it yourself. If it's not loud enough later, there are things we can do. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but that gives you that safety that you don't have the chance really to screw things up. That way you can have someone who laughs really loudly or really projects like I keep doing and it's barely hitting that minus six, which means I've still got six dB of kind of space, headroom it's called, left to go just before it goes to horrible frying nasty town. Oh, sweet, sweet coffee. Probably shouldn't drink coffee when you're doing voiceover, but that's, again, <laughs> not the scope of this video. So the next thing to do is simply make sure you can hear yourself. Now, there are two ways to do this. 
Uh, now that we've got the meters going, one way is next to this record arm button. It's a tiny little speaker icon. That's record monitoring. If I click that, now I'm coming through. I can hear myself through the headphones. There's a very tiny little delay on it. Uh, and that's to do with this number in the top right, the samples. If you're doing voiceover, you can probably click on that. And where it says request block size, if there's too much of a delay for you, you can tick that box, put a smaller number in there. And if everything's set up right with your interface, it should. It's usually numbers that are uh, powers of two, like 512, 256, 128, 64. The lower it gets, the less of the delay there is. But if your computer isn't exactly the most powerful thing in the world, it might struggle the lower that number goes. But generally for voiceover, because we're only doing really one track, most of the time that's fine. So just, yeah, tick that, get that down. I'm already down at 128, which is quite low. And for me, this is not a problem. I can hear myself nice and clearly. Uh, you can hear me now coming through the system. I've switched microphones. And all seems to be working. Uh, the other way, if that's a real irritating thing to you, and I'm going to switch back off this mic, is, and sorry, to turn that off, you have to click that a couple of times to get back to the record monitoring being off, uh, is to use the monitoring system of whatever your audio interface is. And that's not Reaper specific. Some audio interfaces will have, uh, say, a switch on them that says direct monitoring on and off. You turn that on, you can hear yourself straight from the microphone through the interface, straight to the headphones. Great. Some of them have a mixer application. Um, the Audient one that I use quite often with the ID14 comes up with big faders. And if you see, say if you've plugged your microphone into input one, you'll see a level four input one bouncing up and down. You turn up a slider and that starts to come through the headphones. With the RME one, it's a little bit terrifying looking, but... In amongst all this scary mess, you can see there's a green bar here. When I talk, that goes up and down. That's channel 17 and 18. So if I turn that up, I can now hear that in the headphones. Now, I can only hear that on one side of the headphones because one microphone means one side. Uh, there is, in this case, there's a tiny little spanner icon and where it says stereo, I can un-stereo them. So I now get separate microphone controls. And this one where it says left 100%, I can then make that mono. Uh, you'll find similar controls on digital mixers for Audience, for Archuria, and for several others. If not, it might actually be on your interface. You might need to look at the manual for that. That is, again, not Reaper specific. I'm going to turn this off now, and I'm going to use the version in Reaper, because that's what I've always done. At this point, we've saved a new file, we've got our channel ready, we can hear it, we know it works, I can hit record. I like to hit control and R on the keyboard because I feel like that's a nice big safe way of doing it. I hold down control and tap R. Um, that's years of doing it with bands and not wanting to screw things up. But you can just hit this red button here and as you can see, we're getting lots of lovely level coming in. And it doesn't look super loud, but that's because, like I said earlier, that headroom thing, if I go, bah, that distorted. That just hit the top, and an audio editor wouldn't really be happy with that. Uh, so I might even want to turn my microphone down a little bit, depending on how loud I'm going to be. If you're someone who consistently is quiet or consistently is loud, that should be fine to get a good thing. But if you're someone who whispers, then does your best Brian Blessed impression, Brian Blessed, then, you know, you might need to make sure this is right. And yeah, when it's working on film anyway, they probably want the average to be around this minus 18, minus 20, maybe even a tiny bit less than that. And they'll be incredibly happy with you if you do that. Now, if I were to make a mistake, and I don't want to stop recording, I just want to say, oh, made a mistake. Let's say I made a mistake. Now, uh, that's still going, but what I can do, I've got my mouse. If I click on the time above there, you'll see a blue line has come up. If I hit M on the keyboard, M for marker, that's come up right on the playhead, and I can slide that little red marker over to where the mistake was. 
and I can just carry on. And that's not stopped the recording at all. So if I'm in the middle of a paragraph, make a small mistake, immediately hit M for marker. Yeah, so wherever I click now, I get an M for marker. And that carries on. So I can see those markers. And so when it comes to it, I can, when I've finished, hit stop. And now I've hit stop, we can see the finished wave file. It's all nice and coloured. Uh, that's not what you'll see by default in Reaper. You will see it looking rather grey by default. So if I go to view and peaks display settings, you can make it look all colourful by changing the display mode to spectral peaks. And that's something you don't have to do. It doesn't actually change the sound. But if you look closely, you'll see that like these bright cyan pieces, these are S's, they're sibilants. If I go back on the timeline by clicking with the mouse just at the top where the time is and hit play with the space bar, I just want to say, oh, made a mistake. Let's say I made a mistook. And every time I go S, you can see that in blue. That's okay, they're meant to be there. This isn't a particular microphone that's sensitive to that. Sounds quite balanced. If there's a bump on the microphone, you might see that come as a big blue thing as well. Um, you don't, Again, you don't have to do that. I like it. It's entirely a personal choice thing. Now, beyond that, let's close down Spectral Peaks. Now we get to editing. So where... If you are doing your own editing, of course. If you're not doing your own editing, send this off to your editor. Happy days. Um, the easiest way might be to just close this down when you're done, and this will have saved itself to a folder with all the WAV files and the Reaper project. Zip that folder up, send it to your editor, say, I did this in Reaper. There we go. That's one way to do it. If you need to do some editing yourself, here's a way to do it. So where I made that marker, where I made the mistake, Let's just play that back. If I were to make a mistake, and I don't want to stop recording, I just want to say, oh, made a mistake. Let's say I made a mistook. Now, uh, that's... Right, so I'm going to hit stop, and I'm just going to click away from this wave so it's not all lit up like a Christmas tree. The first thing I change here in Reaper is you'll have noticed that everything when I click around with the left mouse to change where I am in the timeline... Everything's snapping to this bar. Great for music, great for when everything's on the beat. Not so great for voiceover, because voiceover doesn't really work rigidly to a grid. So, at the top left here, there's a little magnet icon for snap, and I tick that, and that's now off. And now, wherever I click, that is exactly where the playhead will land. So, now we've got this right in the middle here. If I hit play, let's say I made a mistook. That's started from exactly there. What I can do now is find exactly where I want to start my correction, hit the letter S for split, and then we come up with a big split here. Now that's not actually done the edit for us, so there are two ways to do this now. Um, I can go to the end of the correction. Yeah, I made a mistook. So there's the end of it. I can hit S for another split. And then we have a section we don't want. I can click it and then hit the delete key and bye bye. And then we can bring everything else in by clicking on the right hand side part of the audio. And then just dragging that in until there's no gap anymore. And then I hit play from before that and magically stop recording. I just want to say, oh, made a mistake. Now, uh, that's still going. but And that's magically disappeared. Fantastic. Nice and simple. The other way to do it, instead of two splits, is to make one single split. And then if I hover over it with my mouse, you'll see a couple of different icons appear. Now, these are fairly descriptive. And so you, you can see now that there are two, two different edges. The left edge of this one, which if I move that, that cuts that one. I'll hit undo, control and Z. Control and Z or Apple and Z on a Mac is your best friend. If you make a mistake, hit that and that undoes it and you're back to where you were. Good to know. And what I tend to do is if I've cut before the mistake, then I can grab the right hand piece, which is where that mistake is. We can see it. And I can just slide this until I'm, I'm at exactly the point where I know it's gone. Now, if you've already made a load of edits here, then you don't want to be having to grab all of these WAV files. This is where this little customization comes in. 
And this is something I like to do for voiceover. I'm not a voiceover artist, but I've worked with a lot of voiceover artists. I'm usually the editor, and so this saves me tons of time. In Reaper, there are loads and loads of things you do that are not combined with a set of keys for shortcuts that should be, for me at least. And so the actions menu on the top left is where all these are found. When I go to actions and show action list, that gives me a huge, I'll just make this bigger, huge list of things you can do in Reaper and a lot of them don't have a key command. But if you really want them, they're all there. Now what I do is I use, I use a little thing here called remove contents of selection uh, moving later items. In something like Adobe Premiere, they call it a ripple edit. And what that does is it takes that section. So the first thing I did before the actions, just to back up a little, is on the playhead, I was clicking around here and that starts us playing at different spots. But if I drag on there, that highlights a certain section. Now, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting this section where, where there is nothing. Now, where nothing is because we've deleted that mistake. So now that section is highlighted. Now, in the Actions menu, where we went to Actions, Show Action List, there's a filter at the top. And if we start typing in the filter, it, it's like a game of Guess Who. It just removes everything apart from what you've typed in. So you get a very short list very quickly. Now, that was called Remove items and that's given us just these choices and where is it i'll just make this a little larger there it is time selection remove contents of time selection moving later items now you can see here this is assigned to the shortcut alt and z alt and z that's not by default i've done that so i've got a shortcut for the selected action i'm just going to quickly delete that shortcut so you'll see now that that shortcut has gone now at the bottom left here, it says shortcuts for selected action, because you can actually have more than one keystroke that does that. And you can assign this to anything, but I just find that things that are quite destructive like this should be on two keys at once so that there's a little bit of a safety mechanism. So if I hit add, in the middle of the screen, that now says type key or move controller. So I'll hit hold down alt and press Z, Z. And that has now appeared in there. So if I close the action menu down, I can now hit Alt and Z, Alt and Z, and that space has closed. That gap has just gone stoop. And at the same time, any edits that I've made, any markers, anything to the right has all moved in, which means that any work that I've done, even if I'm going back to edit, is all going to be intact great for trimming down and shaving down all the mistakes in voiceovers and the repeats and you know just making things nice and efficient now let's say just for argument's sake there's no need for me to actually go and do a soliloquy but let's just move this section here and that section here let's say we're done and that i've recorded two chapters now i only needed one track for this and that's because of the way that we can organize things and I organize things using regions. So if I right click, I can drag a box around all the WAV files that I want to select. So let's say that's this. Let's say this is chapter one. Chapter one is done. So on the timeline, I hover over that and right click. And there is a selection here, set selection to items. Now this is another one that in the action menu, I have customized this to be on Shift and Z uh, because I use this a lot. And what that does is this is now highlighted. The next step is I right click again where I was and talk about regions. So just a little further down here is create region from selection, which by default is on Shift and R. Now at the top here, you'll see this big gray bar. If I click away from this, and select this over here, you'll see this remains, this big gray bar at the top. That's now a region. And I'm gonna do the same with this one over here on the right, I'm gonna shift and Z to select it, which is that action that I customized, shift and R, that's now the second one. Now, 
Let's rename these so that we know exactly where we're at because you can rename markers, you can rename regions. If you want to use markers differently than how we did to show mistakes, then you can do. Uh, if I right click on this region and edit region, let's call this chapter one. If I can actually spell right, chapter one. And do the same with the other one, right click, edit region, chapter two. Let's say we're happy with these now and we want to send these to our publisher. So I'm going to hit save again. You should always hit save regularly just in case anything goes wrong. And I'm going to go to file and render. Now this brings up this big scary uh, box here. This is the render box. Now we want the master mix because this is, we've not done any effects or anything like that. If you want to use compression, EQ, any of that stuff, that is definitely scope for a separate video. There are loads of things on that, including tutorials from myself, uh, including the ultimate Reaper guide, which is something I've produced with Pro Mix Academy. That is hours and hours of this really in-depth stuff. But this is all you will need to get these files out to your um, editor, publisher, whoever it may be. So your source is going to be the master mix. The bounds uh, is not going to be the entire project because that would give us one file, including all this big silence here. We want to change this to project regions. And that now here says two regions because there are two regions. There's the region manager, which we can click on. And there we can tick boxes, select which ones we want. Oh, there's the scary looking region matrix, which right now just has a few tiny little boxes. But again, that's scope for another video where it says directory. That's the folder where we want this to be. I usually hit the browse button, it gives me a big drop down. But in the top set here, because we saved this to a folder already, one of these options at the top is going to be the folder that we've been working in. So I'll just click that. But otherwise, I can browse for a directory and choose where these go. Now, this project's called Reaper VoiceOver, so the files are called Reaper VoiceOver by default, and they don't have to be. And here's where we use a really nice thing called wildcards. Wildcards are something that can help with naming lots of things very quickly. So wildcards use the dollar sign. So after the name Reaper VoiceOver, I'm going to go dollar sign region. And at that point, it says there are two files and it gives me an example just underneath of what one's going to be called. It's going to be on my D drive in my Dropbox in the studio folder, Reaper VoiceOver, Reaper VoiceOver Chapter 1 dot wave. And next to it, it says two files. If I click on that, that gives me a list of all of them. So if you've got hundreds uh, and you want to just quickly check what they're all called, that will give you a drop down and show you at this current time with this naming and wildcard, that's what they're going to be called. Uh, so an extra thing you could do, let's say that we want these to be numbered at the very start. So let's put a couple of space bars in the start and I'm going to put in dollar region number. And instead of actually putting the name of the region in there, that's just going to put 01, 02, 03 and so on. So now that's named 01 and they will now be organized in that way. So if the instead of chapter one, chapter two, if these had different names, if you're working with something technical and you want the regions to be called that, do it right there. Uh, the sample rate, like I was saying, you'll probably want this to be 48,000 hertz. And channels, we've been working in mono, so we're gonna want mono. Full speed offline is what you want, so you're not waiting all day for your files. Uh, everything else here shouldn't really need touching. And then where the output format is, if this is going to publishing, they'll probably want a WAV file. So WAV 24-bit PCM is what you want. If it's going out to MP3 and this is ready, uh, then you'll go format MP3. And then you've got bitrate, which is, again, de depends. Ask your publisher, your hosting uh, what they want and they will tell you and just put that number in here and then hit render that will for me render two files and there we go that's going like lightning because there's no effects on here and those two things that we did are done i have mp3s because that might be i don't know if let's say this was going to audible that might be what they want if if all your music and everything is done um if we were doing this as a podcast uh, just to do an additional here. Let's say the podcast is two people. So I'm going to put a new track 
under the previous one because tracks run concurrently. And then I'm going to call this other guy. And hit record on there. Uh, maybe record monitor that too if that's what I need. And choose my input for whatever channel that is. And that will now record me two channels separately. So later on I can use these volume sliders to make them louder or quieter. I can affect them. I can split if someone coughs or if someone swears and you need them not to swear, you can then uh, trim that out. You can have a separate channel here and you can insert uh, music. You can have other announcements and things dropped in wherever you like them. You can get as complicated or as simple as you want. So that should be the long and short of how to make edited voiceovers in Reaper. Hope you found that useful. If you're looking for more stuff on Reaper, then like I said at the start, we have the ultimate Reaper guide, which is available with a link in the description below. Um, if that's not something you need, then consider subscribing, hit the like button, all the usual YouTube stuff all helps us. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam Steele and I'll see you in the next video. See you later. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server, link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop Pole Studios. See you there.